This is Twit. Chuck Haley, he's an astrophysicist, co-director of the Columbia Astrophysics Laboratory. Hey, Chuck, good to see you. Thank you for joining us good today. Good to see you guys. This is exciting. And just it, this, this, now, how long have you been working on this? Oh, we've been working on this off and on for about three years. It's one of those things that the mainstream media gets a hold of, and all of a sudden it's a huge story, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> three years in. Uh, well, I think we talked about Chandra not so long ago on this show. Tell us about the Chandra X-ray Observatory. Well, Chandra is an observatory uh, that launched about 18 years ago, so it's been up there for a long time. But it's got the uh, probably the best pair of eyes of any telescope. It's got very good angular resolution, so when you're looking in very crowded fields like the galactic center that have a lot of X-ray sources, it's really good for figuring out what's going on. So that's why we decided to use it. X-ray as opposed to visible light. Correct, correct. Uh, the galactic center is filled with a lot of gas and dust and is just like a fog. You can't really see any optical light coming out of there, but the x-rays, just like they cut through your body, they cut right through that gas and dust so that you can get a nice signal from objects in the center. Is that the Milky Way, the gas and dust you're talking about? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just what you see, you know, when you look up at night, uh, you see all those stars, but also there's a lot of gas and dust in there. And that's what I'm talking about. The light doesn't go through it very easily. Yeah. Now, the X-rays that you picked up from this, is that Hawking radiation or is that something different? No, Hawking radiation is something a little bit uh, different. Uh, nobody's uh, actually seen Hawking radiation. And if they had, that would make this story look like it was a <laughs> dwarf story. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I only wish we'd found Hawking radiation. But no, these are, uh, these are x-rays that are coming from the vicinity of the black holes themselves that we found. And so what did the x-rays tell you? Tell us about these black holes. We, haven't we always thought that the Galaxy Center was a creamy, delicious black <laughs> <laughs> I think we're thinking chocolate bar. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had lunch. Yeah, was was yeah, at the center of the galaxy. That's not news. Mm. Right, right. There's a there's a there's a there has always been a supermassive black hole there that's about four million times the mass of the sun, and we've Holy known about cow. that for a long time. But the question, uh, basically, for the longest time, people have theorized for more than two decades that there ought to be this large number of little black holes, maybe, say, 10 times the mass of the sun, all orbiting around the supermassive black hole. But there hasn't really been a lot of evidence for that. Is it that the, the massive black hole attracts other black holes? Why would these little black holes be there? Well, there's a, there's a couple of theories. One is that they, they were formed kind of farther out and sort of sunk into the center because as they bump into other stars, they lose energy. And just like if you dump sediment into a glass of water, it, the heavy stuff sinks to the bottom, these black holes will sink uh, right oh, up close to the supermassive black hole. So and, it, and, uh, you could think of it as the bottom of the uh, galaxy in a way. And, and in a way, yeah, it's where, where kind of everything wants to sink. Right. And uh, that's, that's one idea. The other is, is that there's a disk around that supermassive black hole and that's a good place to make big stars. And so you get the big stars, ah. they die, they turn into black holes, they grab a, a companion star that's running by them, and that's the kind of system that we detected. Okay, would LIGO be any use, use in, in detecting when these black holes sort of crash into each other and if they hit the big one? What's LIGO? Oh, the yeah, gravity, yeah, that's, gravity wave. Um, test yeah, that's a, great, that's a great question. I'm, I'm sure everybody knows about uh, gravitational wave radiation, and I think one of the uh, neat things that's going to come out of this is uh, the theorists will be able to predict how many events that LIGO ought to see, say, out of the center uh -huh. of other galaxies. Because if you see a lot of black holes in our galaxy, we're really kind of a normal run-of-the-mill galaxy, so you ought to see these things everywhere. So I'm imagining that LIGO will eventually see some events that come from these black holes that are orbiting supermassive black holes in other galaxies. So you mentioned this pair, black hole and, a, and, a, and another star. That was critical to your discovery. Yeah, before we started, you were asking, how do you see a black hole if it's black? It's black, and right? The answer, it's, the, yeah, that's the right. definition of a black hole is it draws all light into it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's really, it's really di if the black holes are isolated, and there were supposed to be like 10 or 20,000 of these things, and, and they're, they're, they don't make anything very nice, because like you say, the light doesn't get out. They do eat gas and dust, and they, they make a little bit of x-rays, but so few they're hard to see. So the, the trick was we decided to look for the black holes 
that have a star so that you have a black hole and a star orbiting each other because then gas can come off the star and make a swirly little disk around the uh, around the black hole oh, and it's cool. there you go That'd it's very hot oh, the picture cool. off to the right yeah and so you can get x-rays from that type of system now that that only happens for maybe five percent of all the black holes but those are the ones that we can go after and detect in x-rays and then you can extrapolate from there onwards to, to to get a general figure of the numbers that are available precisely that's what we did i mean you know you have to make two huge extrapolations one is you know, the galactic center is very far away, so we miss a lot of the fainter objects. So that got us from a dozen up to maybe 300 to 500. <sighs> We're missing most of them because they're too faint. And then only about 5% of the black holes are able to capture a star. So multiply by another factor of 20, and you're up around 10,000, which is actually what the theorists had been predicting. Ten th so there's the massive black hole <laughs> and then 10,000 smaller black holes around it. Right, right. Holy and, and cow! So basically, oh, yeah. if you're in a spaceship, and never go through the center <laughs> don't of Don't go that way. Not a, not, a good not a good place to be. Not a good New. place to be, exactly. <laughs> wow. And uh, why, how did they predict that number? That's an interesting number. What, what, where did that come from? Well, you know, you have uh, what, what, if you're looking, basically, there's a whole bunch of stars out there. We know the big ones form black holes. We know how many stars there are, so we can predict from the number ah. of very massive stars how many of them will form black holes. And then you just, from there, you can figure out how many settle into the center of the galaxy. So this is a cool thing to mm. discover. And obviously that's why you got all the mainstream media attention. But what, what, is, it, what is the value to you of studying this? What, what can we learn? Well, you know, the, 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 for me, the first thing was just, it was kind of a really neat mystery because, you know, the theorists had said there were all these black holes there and, why didn't we see them? Right. So it was really kind of fun to solve that kind of mystery. The, the other thing, though, is, is, you know, gravitational wave astronomy is the really hot subject now. Oh, yeah. And I think this discovery is really going to help them figure out how many type of gravitational wave events you can see in the centers of other galaxies. And theorists have calculated that, but they can kind of use the numbers we have now to really pin down what that number is in other galaxies. So I'm just an ordinary, humble X-ray astronomer, but it's it's good to be able to help out the gravitational wave people because they're the they're kind of going to be the hot topic for the next couple of decades. I'm, I'm going to say ordinary, hum, humble astronomer. These things do not go together in the way that you uh, think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And of course, it's always great to be able to talk about black holes. There's something oh, about yeah. that that grabs people's attention, especially kids who are interested in science. When you talk about black holes, they're just fascinated. It's an amazing concept. And they want to know more. And I think that that's, if nothing else, the fact that there's, well, thousands of black holes at the center of our galaxy is pretty exciting news. And then when Andromeda collides, then we're going to get even more. So. Please don't even say more, that. Even more, even yeah. more. <laughs> it's great to talk to you. Thank you so much, Chuck. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much indeed. Chuck Haley's an astrophysicist. I it. Yeah, co-director of the Columbia Astrophysics Laboratory. You see, this is res respect. You know, it's that is pretty like, awesome. You don't need to be humble when you've got a title like no that. No need <laughs> to be humble. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for spending okay. some time with Thanks, us, Chuck. Guys. We appreciate it. Thanks Take care. Wow. Bye -bye. What did he say? Fifteen hundred? Uh, ten thousand. Ten? What? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's See, a lot of things getting pulled apart. And oh, it's yeah. And each one of those is a star that that died and then collapsed in on itself and created a as super. As we know. I mean, intense gravitation. Do you remember field. all the all the fuss when we thought that Kern was going to uh, d the the Large Hadron Collider was going to create little right. mini black holes? Right. Never happened yet. But at the same time, you know. So you think maybe the aliens created a, a, a Large Hadron Collider and then turned the center of the galaxy into a, a massive no-go zone? Well, I don't know. You see, I grew up with Disney, the, the Disney, the, the <laughs> Disney film, The Black Hole, which I understand right. if you go right. down it will take you into a weird landscape of wrecked machinery. I think that's where uh, Mary Poppins and Dick Van Dyke live. Uh, ho hopefully so, because his accent was painfully <laughs> bad. It wasn't an English accent. It was Hello a Black there, Hole Mary accent. Poppins. Hello, Mary. <laughs> It's oh, like me trying to do a Texan accent. <laughs> it just doesn't work. <laughs> All right.